1. In honor of my first night audit shift in two years, I thought I would regale you all with the tale of my first night audit shift by myself. So a couple of years ago, I was struggling to get my foot in the door at a hotel. I was going to school for hospitality, but no one would give me a chance. I'm certain some of you have experienced this as well. Finally, I got hired at an airport hotel by telling them that I would work any time, any day, just to give me a shot. I worked front desk for a couple of weeks until our night auditor quit, and they asked me if I would be willing to work full-time night audit. They swung me with the higher pay, and the old relief night auditor was a classmate of mine, and pointed out that I could do schoolwork when audit was over and I was just being a presence at the hotel. I accepted, did the training, etc. And then it came, my first night alone. I was ready. I had napped, I had cooked dinner, brought my textbook, prepared myself mentally. Let's effing do this. I was cruising along, got everyone checked in, I was printing my reports, everything was going smoothly. Danger, Will Robinson. A woman comes in with a wallet and tells me there's a man in her cab, says he's a guest with us, and she needs to get him out of her cab immediately. I very carefully check the wallet to see if there's an ID, find it, and search the guest's name. Can anyone guess where this is going? As I'm trying to figure out how to tell this lady that this is not a guest with me, and that they'll have to have some wacky adventure to figure out where he actually is staying, I'm realizing it's taking a while for either this guy or the lady to come inside. I grab my phone and go out to my driveway, Port Cochere, where there is a body lying there. A body. I call 911 and then my AGM to let her know that EMS has been called in case she's looking at the cameras at 3 in the morning. Meanwhile, I'm standing there freaking out because I don't know if he's dead because I'm certainly not going near him. Because at the very least, if he's not dead, he's on something, and he can jump me. And I'm, how to put this, not a strong person. So I'm a good six feet away from him going, sir? Sir? Hoping for, I don't know exactly, but I think 20-year-old me was hoping he would just get up and wander into the night and away from my hotel. Of course, that doesn't happen. EMS shows up. Cops and firefighters have no pity because it's Friday, and probably their 17th call like this. I lived in a huge tourist town, and basically are like, DUDE, GET THE FUCK UP! Nudging him with their shoes. They get him loaded up into the bus, and away they go. I go back inside, finish audit, finish my panic attack, finish my shift report, and go home. I ended up working there for another year or so, and then became FOM of that property, in kind of a funny way, which is a story for another time. 2. Guest booked for two weeks for an intensive week-long class he had at a nearby school. Got the student friends and family rate of 75-ish per night, when the best flex is close to 130 for the same room type. Stayed one week. Found out on day two of class, he didn't know the dates. This is a graduate level student. Homeboy then told front desk he wanted to check out a week early. Homeboy signed both reg card and extended stay agreement, stating he would pay best flex for all nights if he left early. Guest demanded a manager call him when he checked out. So, of course I call. He explains to me he booked for two weeks and only needed one, and we should have cancelled all the other nights. Problem is, he stayed one and a half weeks. I refuse and graciously offered hotel credit toward a future stay. He proceeds to tell me that I should refund him because he didn't know the dates of his own course. He says he won't come back to our hotel specifically in January. He doesn't know my husband is in the same school, and that I already know the course calendar was released before January of this year. I explain to him patiently, it's not our fault he booked the wrong dates, and that I can adjust rates to Best Flex, but that he'd probably pay more at Best Flex rather than the hotel credit for just staying the fortnights in question. He then becomes demanding and rude. I ask a final time, hotel credit or not. He accepts the credit. Good job. Except then he makes one last snarky remark about how nobody explained the cancellation policy. I then go into a full-length explanation of the different cancellation policies and send him his dang hotel credit in an email where I state that I am in close cahoots with the school, 
What he doesn't know is that my family is generous, and we are donors as I am an alumna and my husband is a current student. He doesn't know I have people connections in the communications department, and that I can easily call the school and complain that the course dates were not made clear to their students, and are therefore causing us grief to help him. Avoid these similar situations in the future, and to ensure that his travel plans are always accurate. The headed doof. Three. It was 1 a.m. and the guest walks in off the street very obviously drunk. He goes upstairs and moments later comes back down to tell me his key wasn't working. I checked his ID. It matched the name on the res. Made him a new key, 512, and sent him on his way. He comes back seconds later, saying it's still not working. I remark on how this is odd. I make a third key, and I grab the master key from the desk. We head up together, and I swear to you, of the four keys we had between us, none of them opened the door. We head back to the elevator so I can make some calls, and he starts telling me to open the bar up for him. This is a huge no-no, so instead I offer him a comp beer and a packet of candy while he waits. He takes an IPA and Swedish fish. I call our head of engineering. I call the backup engineer. Neither answer on the first several calls. Finally, the head answers on try number five and tells me he's on vacation. The backup should have answered. So something must be wrong. I call the supervisor while the head calls the backup. The supervisor tells me to put him in the last room, a room already reserved for another guest, I cut a key to this new room and notice he's on his third beer and a second pack of candy. He's been bilking this while I've been trying to figure the situation out. He tells me that tonight should be comped or his wife will call, and I tell him I'll pass it on to my supervisor in the morning for approval. He goes to bed in the new room, 226. The backup arrives about 10 minutes later, and I send him up to 512 to figure out the lock acting up. At this point, it's almost 2 a.m. I get a call at the desk from 512, and when I answer, an old southern man is hissing that someone is breaking into the room. I tell him I'm on it, and run upstairs to find the backup engineer holding his hands up in the air and frantically explaining himself in broken English to an irate middle-aged southern man. I explain the situation, and then it dawns on me. Do you happen to have a son with an identical name? Yeah, why? He told me this was his room. It's not, is it? Nah, he's in 516. Of course, so I start spitballing solutions since we can get into 516 and know the doors aren't a problem. The dad, however, isn't interested in any peaceful solutions. He wants to join this RPG party and go wake up his drunken good-for-nothing son. So we head to the second floor, and he knocks. I call the room. Nothing. He's passed out drunk. I unlock it, but he has the toggle lock flipped over on the inside. The backup engineer pulls out a wrench the size of my arm, and in one movement, rips this toggle off the wall, holding the door open for the father to head in. The son begins screaming profanities, demanding to know why he's being woken up, and yelling at me for being somehow wrong. I politely explain he will not be calm tonight, or a stay because this entire situation was his fault. He gave the wrong room number, knew his father's name and his were the same, and took advantage of my hospitality to take two more beers than I offered, more candy than I offered, and still try to get out of paying for his room. His father tells him to shut up and not say another word. No sooner is he in his room, 516, than he's throwing things in a fit of anger. The father shakes my hand and apologizes to me for his son being a moron. I told him it's fine and I'm just glad the situation worked out. The backup engineer, by the time I got back to the second floor, had cleaned the room and repaired the broken toggle lock. I go back to the desk, catching up on my work. The last guests never showed up. 4. Had this guy check in a few days ago. Noticed he was a bit odd, but he paid for a weekend cash, and I had hoped he'd camp out in the room or on the beach, and I'd never have to deal with him. That was not the case. The following is a log I've been keeping, purely to keep the morning girl from staying him over next week. A guest found his wallet. I went to return it to him, 
and he told me to stop lying because he knows someone came in his room and took it. Accused me multiple times of working for the CIA and watching him. Called me from the room and accused me of filtering his calls to keep his friends from being able to reach him. No one's ever called for him. Stands either next to the night window, the window next to the wooden pool gate, or the fish tank and just stares for the longest time. Found four keys in his room we gave him and accused me of handing out his room keys to everyone. Revs the hell out of his truck and parks in the handicapped spot for no reason at all. Has begun to say, please stop, every time he sees me. I guess about the CIA thing. Thinks it's the CIA because he is fully trained by them in fighting and killing techniques and has paperwork authorizing him to use lethal force on anything he deems as a threat to him. Has apparently killed 117 people because of his ex-wife Shelby sending them to bother and attack him and not leaving him alone. Wants me to announce to all the employees to please not patronize him and shrug off his skills and abilities. Periodically sat in the lobby drinking copious amounts of Red Bull and saying thank you to almost every guest that walked by. None were creeped out or would have ended it sooner. Asked about my time in the Hells Angels since he heard that I ride. I don't. And just what? Wanted me to know he has a patch for the Atlanta chapter and has been in for seven years. During night shift, stood at window across from front desk, shining a flashlight through and just staring as he shone it across the lobby and into a fish tank. Randomly walks to the pool door and the laundry door and flashes his phone flashlight toward me like he's trying to send a message in Morse code. Left his door open all day and complained that we gave him a bad room with water everywhere. Asked for another room. When I refused, he went around the entire property and let me know which rooms weren't occupied that he could move into. Yelled at me to turn off the squares. Told me he's not dumb and neither am I when I said I had no idea what he was talking about. Said to let him know if I could see his scout sniper friend, Fuck Ugly, because he could take anyone out. 5. First things first, I'm a newbie at this. I work less than a month, and while I'm already good at paperwork, be humble, my social skills progress is very slow. I'm a shy person, but it usually gets better after I start to feel like I belong. Give me two months, I'll work it out. So, newbie should have some kind of trial by fire. Freshman prank, something that will get you to the League of Normal. Hardened colleagues, right? And I had that, but oh lord, why was there no other way than a fucking hockey team? You heard me right. This nightmare of every FDA hockey team has arrived today, on top of our hotel and pretty much all the city being sold out. To make things worse, it's an insanely difficult trial. Adult hockey team. Oh yeah, picture that. Nice day, friendly clients and dogs. Oh, did I mention, there is some dog expo in the city. Our hotel charges extra for pets, but still allows them as long as they are not German Shepherd-sized, unlike most hotels in this area. Nearly half of our hotel is full of dogs. Anyone would think that this should have ruined my day, but on the contrary, it was great. Yeah, they smell and sometimes are loud, but they are beautiful, great, and their owners are polite and look after their dogs. We have a Vizsla, a Doberman, not sure, two Poodles, three White Terriers, a Retriever, fluff, and there is a Latvian group with not-so-easily identifiable dogs, white, brown, dark-haired, curly Terriers with those long rectangular legs. But anyway, it's not so important. Vizsla's owner is the best of them, and Ray, he didn't give us trouble at all, despite being the big one. Actually, white terriers were at fault there. They got there at 5pm and their owners soon left them in their rooms. Dogs were very nervous and one even barked at the other one. When they were left alone, they made some noise, but it's not like it was really bothering. Their owners then returned and it was all nice and quiet until they appeared. Let me clarify that, if you book a room on this site when it's really clear that this room has no TV and then you arrive and whine that your room has no TV, you're an idiot. But if you book nine rooms and don't notice that six of them are double beds, 
you're an actual reptilian, and you probably have some elaborate plan to destroy my mood because no one can be that stupid. Oh wait, cue the hockey team. Around 20 grown men, drunk, loud, screaming profanity, and laughing here and there appear at my desk. I still don't know what I'm up against. Soon we discover the problem with the rooms. And their answer is, well, we can't sleep with each other, loud laughter. Girl, can you do something? I'm between a rock and a hard place, all the rooms are sold out, and there are people I can't kick out just because somebody was that stupid. Eventually I put them in all our available rooms, hand out folding beds, scan their documents, and smile with all my might. Because I'm actually terrified of these big, loud, drunk people who probably annoyed all our guests. And Barking Terrier doesn't make it better. And I can understand him completely. If I could, I'd howl right there. The leader of the team gets more and more annoyed at the dog as it continues barking. For a fucking reason. Of course he'll bark, because he's alone and there's some scary loud noises outside of the room. The leader, let's call him Moron One, actually becomes scary when the team members start to the room and he stays there when I recount what he needs to pay now. He starts making remarks about how he doesn't want to live with dogs, that we should have said about the dogs, really? And then smiles like it's all a joke and says, What do you think, Anima? Would it be better to break all their skulls? What? Of course, then he looks at me like it was just a joke, and continues his drunken dog rant. How he can't sleep when this fucking dog is so loud. You are the reason he's loud. You are the reason. And then, while I call our manager to check the prices, he comes to the room with the dog and fucking smashes the door. Not knocks. Not knocks loudly. Smashes. Believe me, I heard that from the deck. It was a fucking crazy strong smash. The dog, of course, stops barking. He gets all cocky and says how he finally shut up the fucking dog. That's where, honestly, I started to feel unsafe. Maybe I was the reason this conflict started. Maybe I should have just stayed put and smile. But you know what? I don't fucking care. Even if it turns out bad for my career, bully whoever you want, but not defenseless scared animals. And maybe I was just a scared girl and made stupid decisions. Anyway, he comes back to the deck and I tell him that he can't do it again, it's disrespectful, and he could damage hotel property. He starts to wind up screaming how he just knocked, so these fucking dogs would shut the fuck up. And starts to rant that we should not allow dogs in there, that he doesn't want to sleep there, that dogs should leave. I still, calmly, say that their owner is paid just as he did and his answer is more drunken, angry, blah, blah, and why do you even allow them here? Because, duh, at this point you've caused more stress and trouble than these dogs and there were a total of 15 or so of them in the building. But I don't say that. I'm just scared because he starts to behave more and more aggressive and those five guys of his team who didn't leave are just standing there, just standing. Way to go, guys. Remind you, they are all grown up, so their cowardice doesn't come from the age difference. They're just assholes. So to defend myself and our clients, I tell Moron One that I will press the alarm button. We actually don't have the button. We need to press a certain number on the phone. He's being really aggressive now, saying, How dare you threaten me? Go, press it. And before I say anything, our manager, thank God, calls me back. I go to the back room, explain the situation to her. While this bitch screams at the background how he behaves normally, it's I who threaten him, fucking dogs, etc. She calls our owner's son, who is a tough Caucasian. Thankfully he's nearby, and I hear from the back room how the conflict starts to die down, and they go outside. That's where I'll admit I cried. Not like, ah, this is horrible, but more like, oh shit, snot. Did that just happen? Snot. Thankfully. There is the owner as well. I calm down and explain to him what happened. He and his son are very kind to me for some reason and say don't cry because of some idiot. There are a lot of them. But I admit, I just got scared. I wasn't around drunk people so much, so I don't know how to talk to them properly. But I know aggression when I see one. So it all ended well, you think? Eh, kinda. He calmed down. Some of the guys from his team actually said sorry to me. Except that it was this 
kind of sorry I don't want to hear. What do you mean? He was right, but it's not your fault. They, the dogs, are there. Excuse me? A bully who can't decide problems with words and uses his power and strength to get what he wants is right. But now it's all over, you say. Uh-uh, not even close. The following includes a guy trying to touch my boob on the ground of correcting my name tag. A guy in his underwear in our lobby. My eyes. Lots of guys asking about the booze. One guy wanted me to call him some whores. They spilled something, then broke something, and were generally very loud until 2am. I officially hate men now. Joke, not really. But this is just the top. My first big shift ending with this is the worst that could happen. Well, if someone tried to rob us, that would be it. Actually, but that's not the end of my shift yet, so... <laughs> and no, I'm not fishing for some sympathy. Who'd feel that for a weak scaredy cat, really? This is just a worst experience story, because I know you enjoy that. Also, I'd be very thankful for some advice or insight on what you'd do in this situation. If I'm not getting them kicked out for today, I'll need them. Edit. Regarding the police. At our property, cops are called when you lose less than you gain, I think. Drunken brats can be handled by our owner's son, and we can still get money off them. But if it's serious, like a fight, a robbery, or a serious threat to FDA, yeah, we call the cops. And when it's a person who doesn't want to pay, we'll call them too. But I know this person can pay, and our owner wants him to pay, because it was a big sum, which became even bigger because of his own stupidity. Hey everybody, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to Confessions of a Hotel Worker number 6. Thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. And I think I'm actually running low on hotel stories, so I'll have to try and source some. Uh, although I might do retail next week. I've got plenty of those right now. And um, yeah, we'll have to build up my reserves anyway, because I haven't been sending messages, so I'll have to get back to that. Make sure I've got plenty of stories to be going on with for the leaner weeks. Okay, and with that, I think I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourselves.